I know this can be confusing, but separate from import from Excel, QuickBooks Desktop also has paste from Excel for customer and vendor list entry. They also have batch enter transactions, which uses a similar format than paste from Excel. We'll be showing this for the AR and AP summary entry. To get to paste from Excel, we'll first go to the customer center. And then under Excel here, we're going to choose the drop down and choose paste from Excel. Okay, so you can see here we have some of our sample customers that we created. It's always good to have some sample data in so you know the fields that are available. So first thing here, we're going to start up in the corner with customized columns. This will allow us to add the additional fields that aren't shown already. This will also allow us to move the order up and down, okay, uh, for the fields so that we can get them in the appropriate order. It'll allow you to paste data easier if you do place them in the appropriate order. And you can paste multiple columns in at one time. So if I want to paste name and then company name at the same time, I could paste them uh, at the same time. But as we'll go into further in the video, it's more difficult, right, to paste multiple columns at a time. So usually we suggest just pasting one column at a time and moving down the line. It just makes it easier so you don't miss anything. So we can see here the fields that are available. I'm just going to go ahead and add them all so we can go through them. Boop, boop. Okay, starting at the top, so we have our name, right? Customer name. We have the company name, which is different than the customer name sometimes. Mr. And Mrs., first name, last name, main phone number, fax, alternate phone number, email. Uh, we have CC email, bill 212345, if it's a job of. So this is one area in QuickBooks that's different than others, right? So you can have the job field in a separate field than the customer name or, the, you know, the client name. So you can set it in the, in the format of full customer colon job name. So it has that option. Or you can choose to say it's a job of X right and this is the name so let's go ahead and move those fields up so we can see what they look like so I'm going to move them up to the top and I'm going to move the customer full job name up to the top okay so when we look at the data that's already in here again here's where sample data helps I can see the full name is four lane ink four lane ink colon job one four lane ink colon job two or what I could have pasted in is I could have said it's a job of for Lane Inc. and the name of the job is job one and job two. All right, I'm just going to continue here now uh, and look through the columns. So I have my, again, bill two, one, two, three, four, five. There's a customer balance field for those open balances that we don't want to use. Uh, we have our customer type, our terms, our account number field. Uh, our credit limit, which is positive here, our job status field, which you can put in here, the start date, the projected end date, the actual end date, the job description, job type, uh, if it's inactive, the special field, right, the custom field that we have set up that is enabled here. We have our price levels. We have our sales rep. Notice that the sales rep, the way that you have to put it in is just by the initial, so we don't have to use that funky format we used when we were doing the IAF file. And then we have the preferred send method. So you can see here that the credit card fields are not available with paste from Excel, so you can't paste in the credit card fields from here, nor is the preferred payment method. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull up my sample data, which I've already created in Excel here. So looking at my data, I have the name, right? And I have, it's a job of, and then bill 2123, phone number, email, customer type. So in QuickBooks, I can go in and get rid of some of these other fields first. It might be a little bit easier, right? So I can get rid of the Mr., Mrs., don't think I had a first name, last name, so I can get rid of those. Just makes it a little easier to find things. I don't have the CC email address as an example or the alternate phone number. Um, and we didn't put a credit limit or a job status. So again, you can get rid of some of these columns. It makes it a little bit easier to get information in there. And then once you have the columns that you want to use, another trick that I use all the time is instead of looking at all active customers here, because basically 
it's showing me the customer list and then I have to remember when I'm pasting to paste on this row. So I change it over to say unsaved customers only and basically that leaves it blank so that it's just pasting in. I can paste from the top row, okay? So the first column that we want to paste in is the name and then that it's a job of, right? Uh, now notice that the name and the job of fields are backwards compared to what's on the Excel spreadsheet. So of course, if I were pasting multiple columns, I would have to come into Customize Columns, move the name field up, and then make the job field of after. So if I did that, right, copy, it's just Control C, I come in here, I push Control V. What's nice about this format is that QuickBooks will tell us right away if there's a problem by making it red and it'll also if I highlight over it'll tell me what's wrong so the text entered is invalid for this field and that's because hotshot company is not set up yet so I can go ahead and do a quick add here to set up hotshot company it gives me that option to do quick add so there's the name and the job of then I have my uh, bill to line one two and three so I'm just gonna copy those three and come in here scroll over Right, and paste one, two, and three. And then we have our phone number. So some of these fields, again, you can set up QuickBooks to be in the right order and then just paste it in. I like to kind of take them in bits and pieces in case there are things that I want to either copy down or I don't want to move in or maybe it's, you know, a formula or a, a format that I don't like, you know, there's all sorts of reasons that I've come up upon and you'll see in the future videos that we do with Paste from Excel how sometimes, you know, you want to copy things down so that you don't have to create an extra column in Excel with just the same data all the way down. So anyway, okay, so when I paste in here the email, notice I still need to start from the top so that it gets it into the appropriate cell. I can't just copy the last line, the last row here. Uh, and paste it in. I mean, I could copy just that one, but if you're doing the whole thing like this, it's easy. It's just always copy the entire column. Uh, and then customer type. So come in here and scroll over to the side for customer type. And whoops. Okay, so there's one <laughs> thing that's an issue. So I just hit this uh, button here that sorted based on customer type, right? So I hit that top line and sorted my uh, columns. Now if you do that, you could potentially put these out of order, right? So right now it's sorted by customer type and let me just see, okay, so these are actually in order, alphabetical order here, but let's pretend I accidentally pushed that on the phone number as an example and I got them out of order here. If I tried to paste in my customer type now, I might be pasting the wrong customer type to the wrong customer. So you want to make sure to be very aware and careful not to click on these top this top row and get them out of order. Or if you do get them out of order, make sure you can put them back in order. So in this case, I have a very small list. It's easy to compare and see Edition Kitchen, POS Warehouse, and Trudy Shop. That's easy to see. But if you ha accidentally clicked on one of these when you have a whole long list of customers, it's probably safest to close out and start again. <laughs> okay, so coming in here, let me just go ahead now and paste in the customer type. Okay, so retail wholesale. And we're going to go ahead and save changes. Okay, four customer records have been saved, which is awesome. Then I can close out of here and I can come into my customer list and see I've got Hotshot Company with Addition and Kitchen, POS Warehouse, and Trudy Shop set up. So now we're going to go into Paste from uh, Excel for the vendor list. So I can get here, honestly, just if I get into the Paste from Excel area, I can just choose vendors from the drop down there. Um, but of course, just like I had it there on the customer center, on the vendor center, they also have the paste from Excel. All right, so on the vendors, I'm not gonna go through how to actually paste it in. We're just gonna talk about the columns here. So let's go ahead and add all these columns over so we can look through them consistently. So we have the vendor name. Uh, obviously vendors don't have sub vendors, so you don't have that in here. We have the company name, Mr. And Mrs. First Last, main phone number, fax, uh, email address, one, two, three, four, five the balances that we don't want to enter data into, print on check as, account number, 
vendor type, terms, credit limit, tax ID, if they're eligible for a 1099, if they're inactive, and then there's that custom field, special field. So you can see here that bill rate level is not on this list and also the accounts tab data, right, where you had those three accounts that you can choose to pre-fill in, that's not here as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go into, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and close out of here, get back to my home screen. We're gonna go into batch entering transactions into QuickBooks. So first of all, you need to be in the Accountants Edition of Premier, so it's Premier Accountant or QuickBooks Accountant, I think is just what they call it. Uh, or you need to be in QuickBooks Enterprise or an Enterprise Accountant, okay? So basically, one of the Enterprise products or an Accountant product um, and those are all desktop products, of course. Uh, when you're in Enterprise and you're not in the Accountants Edition, so when I right now I'm logged in in the Accountants Edition, so I have this Accountant dropdown where I have ooh, batch enter transactions. But if you're not in the Accountants Edition, if you're just in regular Enterprise, when you go in and set up your users and roles, there's a role in there called External Accountant, and you need to assign the External Accountant role to whoever's gonna be doing this feature, right? So you have to set up a new user, you can't just do this in admin, set up a new user, assign them the external accountant role so that they have access to this accountant's toolbox. All right, so let's go in and batch enter transactions. So the first thing, it does require you to have a bank account uh, because the first batch enter transaction option is to enter checks. So I'm just gonna call this bank, and of course we would be able to change this in the future. Um, so so of course it requires that because the first one it defaults to is checks. But we're not gonna do checks today, we're gonna do invoices and credit memos. Okay, so invoices and credit memos. Of course you wanna choose the appropriate AR account. Hopefully you just have one AR account. If you have multiple AR accounts or more than like two or three, maybe just give us a call and see why we're having so many AR accounts. There might be a better way to do things in QuickBooks. Okay, so we have the customized columns again, just like we see in the paste from Excel. Um, so I can see in here which fields are available when I'm pasting in invoices. So I have the due date, sales rep, to print, to email, what the price level is, which template I wanna use, if we're gonna use online payment uh, or allow the customers to pay us online, the date, the invoice or credit memo number, customer job, terms, amount, description, item, quantity, rate, total. Okay, so all of those fields are available. Now if I go look at my Excel spreadsheet, and I have my little AR tab here. So basically on this one, I'm doing some pretty simple entry. Usually when we do open accounts receivable, it's very basic amount of information. All I'm trying to do is get in there, what customer owes me money, on which invoices, what is the aging on the invoices, and what's my total open AR, right? So that's what I'm what I'm doing here and sometimes we'll put in the sales rep as an example because of cash basis com, cash basis commission reporting sometimes I have to be in there and there's also there's always different right things anytime you're entering data but this will give you an example so I have date number customer so first thing I want to do is I'm gonna put these in order so I have date number customer notice here it's customer colon job we don't have the customer and the job in two different fields so date, number, customer, then I have terms, okay, terms. Now on this spreadsheet, I did put in the item open, right, but you don't necessarily need to put in that item open or the quantity of one, because these two fields are consistent. So I'll show you some a different way to put this in. Then we have the rate and the sales rep. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the amount, and we need to add the sales rep over here and move it up, okay and leave item quantity over there uh, and rate in total can just stay, then we could remove them, but okay. So now I'm gonna take from the spreadsheet, so copy the first couple of columns here and go into QuickBooks and right click and paste. Now notice what it does here, so it posts in my date, uh, it puts in the number, right? that we have for the uh, invoice numbers. It puts in the customer and job. It does give me a red field here. And so I have to say, well, okay, well, why is this red? And it'll highlight and say it's invalid text. Now the reason for this, it won't just allow me to quick add here, right? Is because I'm trying to add a customer that doesn't exist and a job that doesn't exist. Okay, so what I would have to do is I'd have to erase the job and then 
click off and do a quick add on the customer and then come back in again and paste the job in. So this is where I'm saying sometimes it's better just to do it column by column rather than a whole bunch of data that you have to review because now not only do I have to paste in that customer again, I have to paste in their terms because the terms follow with the customer or, or default with the customer. If I had default terms set up for the customer, it would show up with their terms. Um, so the amount field, again, of course, when you're doing batch enter transactions, one of the benefits here is that it will put, paste in for you your um, credit memos and your invoices at the same time. So when we're using a tool like Transaction Pro Importer, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, it won't allow you you have to do two separate imports, one for invoices, one for credit memos. And in QuickBooks uh, here, you can paste in the credit memos and invoices at the same time, which is kind of nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in the sales rep. Okay. Again, I'm just doing control C, control V, right, to get these in here. So RA is not set up on my sales rep list. Uh, I can go ahead and set it up. So it's Rob Adams. And I'm going to say a quick add, and Rob is an employee. Okay. Now notice here again, I can paste in just RA. I don't have to paste in that funky format that we used in IIF files. Okay. And then coming over here, I'm going to choose the item open. Now notice when I put in the open, it fills in for me my description. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and copy it down. So on fields that you know you're just going to copy the amount all the way down, you don't necessarily have to go in and add the additional column in on your Excel spreadsheet. You can just put it in the top line and hit copy it down. So now down below here, it gives me my total charges, 3199.83 and negative 54. So on my Excel spreadsheet, I can add these up. Right? If I highlight these three, it'll tell me 3199.83 and then I have the negative 54. I can go ahead and save my transactions and all transactions have been saved. So now I have some open AR in my file. So now let's just take a quick peek at the bills and credits just to see the fields that are available. You understand the process, but the fields that are available, is it billable, what's the customer job, what's the item, the cost, the quantity, the date, the reference number, vendor, terms, bill due, account, amount, and memo. So again, on, on a bill, right, we can post it straight to an expenses count or we can post it to an item so you can do both of those here as well. So looking at the pros and cons from uh, Paste from Excel. So pros, uh, you can do lists and transactions, okay, inside of QuickBooks. Uh, it does give you an error log, right? So where it was red, it tells you what is wrong and so that you can go in and fix it. It also tell you uh, if you did decide to import, it would leave you with just the ones that had errors so that it would you know, if, you're, if I were importing a thousand customers, it would have left me with just the customers that had errors so I could fix those and imported all the other ones so that they kind of get out of my way. Uh, you can import a credit memo and an invoice at the same time, and it can be done in multi-user mode. And of course, along with the credit memo, you can also enter a vendor bill and vendor credit at the same time as well. Okay, and in multi-user mode, as I just mentioned. Cons, so sample data is not really accessible. You have to create your own sample data, put in a couple sample customers to see what it looks like. Uh, you need to organize the Excel spreadsheet to match QuickBooks or QuickBooks to match the Excel spreadsheet if you're going to post multiple columns or paste multiple columns at the same time. Uh, you need to create the Excel file on your own, right? There's no sample Excel file. You have to be super careful not to click on the column headers and get the sorting out of whack or sorted the wrong way so that when you're pasting, you're pasting in the wrong information to the wrong customer. There's no undo, so make sure you have a backup. Okay, And then of course with this one where we've seen errors and why we don't use it as much or we use it only with uh, some of our kind of small and mid-sized customers is that it can cause QuickBooks to crash. So in a future video we're going to look at there's a thousand lines that you can uh, bring into QuickBooks and it imports it in you know 30 seconds no problem but we have found as the lists get longer and longer it does tend to crash out. So as an example I have a customer that had 25,000 inventory parts that we needed to import into the system. I got in the first 5,000 or so, 
above that 5,000, it would crash any time I tried to enter any additional information in through this way. So that's where the next uh, option that we're going to show you, Transaction Pro Importer, comes in and is a little bit more helpful.